Habits and Health, episode 51. Welcome to the Habits and Health podcast, where we believe creating healthy habits should be easy. Brought to you by an educator and coach for anyone who wants to create a healthier life. Here's your host, Tony Winyard. Welcome to another edition of the podcast where we give you ideas to improve habits around various areas of your health. My guest today, Filippo Di Leonardo, and he is a a three-time entrepreneur and he has a real passion and a mission to create products and services that improve people's lives. And he's created an app called Essentia, which is about a work-life experience to it helps people to create habits that are going to help um, with their well-being and to feel more balanced and energized and inspired. So we're going to hear a lot more about this app during the episode. So I hope you enjoy it. Habits and health. My guest today, Filippo Di Leonardo. Did, did I get that pronunciation right? You did, you did, absolutely. Fantastic. So we, you're in Italy? I am, yes. Just, just outside Venice in a small town called Treviso, which is actually my hometown. Wow. And I mean, it, I mean, well, we were speaking before the recording started. I love Italy. It's, I've actually been more times to Italy than any other country on the planet. I mean, I've been there at least, I think, 20, 30 times or something. Oh, wow. Okay. So you yeah. really are an expert. I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I love Italy. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> But you travelled quite a bit from from what I gather from when we were speaking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I left Italy when I was 14. So, uh, yeah, I'm Italian, but really I've been living abroad most of my adult life. Um, so, you know, kind of New York, Switzerland, Spain, London, uh, now Berlin. So uh, I just couldn't cope with the appalling weather that, that Berlin has in, in sort of January, February. So I thought, you know what, just come back home. You know, embracing their remote culture uh, to the fullest. So it's uh, pretty good. Well, we won't start talking about um, terrible weather because I live in England. So ah, let's yeah, yeah. It's unfair. Sorry. <laughs> we move on. <laughs> I'm quite used to terrible weather. So, <laughs> so what is it you're, I, I mean, I know you're involved in a few different things, but how would you describe to people what it is that you do now? Oh, okay. That's a... Very straightforward question. Um, well, what do I do? I do a couple of things. I mean, uh, the fir- my main sort of sort of day to day activities uh, involve one in the sort of creation and launch of this uh, new application that we're building, a well being app called Essentia, and that really is, uh, let's say, the main purpose uh, of what I do and what inspires me the most. Mm-hmm. Um, as we were saying before, you know, uh, talking about human behavior, understanding how to live more more empowering, sustainable, inclusive, and even fulfilling lives. That's really my, my mission uh, and mm-hmm. how to help people achieve that. And then I also do some, some training and consultancy um, on the side where I help uh, brands understand how they can create more human experiences for their customers so that it can actually engage them. Uh, long term uh, in a way that is more sustainable both as a business but also for consumers uh, to be empowered and not just be seen as consumers which is not a word that I particularly like because it implies a whole set of things which I think is not really what the world needs in many ways but yes um, trying to make um, the customer experience more human and and meaningful. So I mean so you mentioned briefly about the app that you you're creating which is is due out any time now yeah. What was what was the inspiration? What made you think about creating an app to, to help people? Well, it's interesting because I'm not a technological person. Uh, so my, my background is actually in, in hospitality. So I when I when I was living in London, I started a business which specialized in creating very exclusive travel and events experiences for for wealthy individuals in Italy. Funny enough, so <laughs> so uh, yeah, I know Italy quite well. Um, but I very early on in my in my sort of professional life, because I started the business straight out of uni, I kind of realized that I needed to be mentally and emotionally and physically at my best if I wanted to kind of increase my chances of hopefully succeeding. And uh, yeah, one of the events that I was organizing, I I met this coach who was talking about how to be your best you every day. And when I heard that talk, I was like, oh my God, that's exactly what I want. I never really kind of come across the whole personal development thing. It was I just never kind of 
I was never really exposed to it. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, this is exactly what I want. So what I did is I started working with him and that opened the whole field of like, you know, complete passion and devotion for understanding, you know, how we operate as people, what makes us tick. Because actually in some ways, you know, hospitality and providing services and experiences is about understanding what makes people tick and how to engage with them. But I always mm. saw it as a more as a consumer kind of uh, perspective rather than as an individual, what empowers you, what motivates you, what makes you feel good. And so as I was working on myself, I really kind of fell in love with the, with this whole world. And I spent years really working and studying with, with leading experts in the field of, you know, behavioral science, neuroscience, uh, spirituality, all everything that could have to do with the, with the human condition. And I was like, you know what, I want to do something in this direction. So I decided to stop what I was doing and wanted to find a way to, to integrate technology just because, um, I was kind of also a bit concerned with the, with the, with the way technology was being developed as a non-technologist. And I wanted to find a way to kind of combine the, the well-being world with the technological world in a way that could be more immersive and more integrated into the flow of our daily lives. Because I was kind of looking at various products out there, but I, I wasn't finding what I was looking for. And so I thought, well, maybe I can try it myself and see <laughs> what comes out of it, you know? So it was really a long journey of self-discovery first and really understanding what's important to me and what is what is the life that I want to live. And that kind of led me towards uh, this direction. So once you started thinking about creating an app, and, and I guess obviously you, you had, you kind of hired some kind of experts to actually create the app itself. Did you, was it clear in your mind from the beginning what you wanted the app to do and how it would help people or did that happen along the way with speaking with people and <laughs> oh God. it happened definitely along the way um you know not being so i came from the approach of a coach right someone that kind of understands on a high level all the things that people should be doing the problem is that when you translate that into a technology people are much uh less forgiving they don't have the patience that you would have in a one-to-one -one. so the experience needs to be a lot smoother it needs to be a lot less intrusive because when we in you know if we think about the way we interact with technology we're really infants right we it's it's a relatively new world for us even if it feels like we've been on forever it's only like a really 20 to 30 years that we're kind of full on so a lot of a lot of us most of us are, are very instinctive when it comes to technology so I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do, um, but it obviously evolved a lot more along the way. And that's kind of been <laughs> quite, an, quite an interesting and challenging journey to kind of evolve the whole concept. But I, you know, I definitely made mistakes and learned a lot of things, but I wouldn't go back because the, the learnings that you, you gain, you know, from all these experiences make you better at understanding how to better serve people. So you know, it is a it is a journey of continuous discovery at the end of the day. So definitely not a clear, you know, like just a one click and it was all perfect. It's it's a it's a journey. And when you when you build products, anyways, it's never perfect from day one. It's actually it's known that it's something that it's never quite perfect. So it's in the in nature of, of of what we do that it actually requires this continuous improvement, which is what actually makes it interesting. Well, there's that saying, isn't there? I can't remember the exact wording, but it's something along the lines of if you wait until the product is perfect, you've waited too long. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. hundred percent. And there is always, you know, the the temptation to kind of wait for the perfect time. Uh, but I've learned <laughs> through the hard way that it's always, it never, it rarely goes as you expect. So it's kind of, I mean, you need to find a balance between something that it goes out early to get feedback, but also that is something that people are worth giving you feedback for, you know, because the reality is also, I believe that nowadays we're much more spoiled than we were 15 years ago. So, you know, maybe if you launched an app, you know, when the, when the iPhone launched the app store, people's willingness to be patient with, with a low quality product would probably be much higher than it is today because, you know, people just switch on their phone and are expecting perfection. So it's kind of finding the, the right balancing act. But yeah, mm. I would agree with that, with that saying. I've certainly been, <laughs> I've made my, my experience in that field too. So it's, um, that is part of the journey. So for how do, how do, how will the, the app help people in what way around sort of well-being and health will it help people? Yeah. So uh, we kind of, 
because obviously well-being uh, requires a certain effort, right? It's kind of, uh, I wouldn't say against our natural instinctive behaviors, but it certainly requires some sort of effort and dedication. And so when I, when I, we kind of thought about, okay, obviously we live, we, you know, we are, we're 24 hours a day. Where do we spend most of our time? And, and most of us, the answer is working. And so we were thinking, what if we could kind of support people in the flow of their daily work experience? Because that's when we experience most stress. That's when we kind of feel we need to be at our best. Um, and so I, we wanted to find a way to support professionals in the flow of their daily work experience with the goal of not only improving their levels of well-being, but literally transforming the way they look at their daily, at their daily um, life. Because uh, well-being, you know, it's, it's such a big word and uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of kind of the science behind it, the neuroscience, you know, science that studies the brain. And when I looked at the neuroscience of well-being, I kind of saw that there are four main pillars, you know, it's self-awareness, resilience, developing a positive outlook and generosity. And, and all these four pillars, if developed, they, they increase massively our levels of well-being. So the goal in some ways is to help people implement these uh, these four pillars and also physical well-being in the flow of their day by basically the, the way the app, the system works is that it asks you to check in in the morning to see how you're feeling energy-wise. And based on that and your schedule for the day, what Essentia does, it recommends a uh, short two minute uh, guided well-being experiences um, that obviously are designed to come at the right time in, in, your, in your day so that you can kind of, you know, bring out hopefully your best you and your best activities while keeping sustainable levels of productivity. And so the idea is to kind of have this mini well-being experiences in the flow of your day. And of course, now it's just the, the very beginning of the app. We have a whole vision for what we want to build. But essentially, that's the first release of what the, the app is going to do. And then it's going to give you some analytics to see, not just quantify your effort, but to sort of track your, your energy levels and your mood over time to kind of see the impact that it has on your productivity and well-being. And so what is the... What would you say is the aim of the average user who starts to use this app in what what would they hope to be achieving i guess to, to get from the app yeah well the first thing would definitely be to re reduce emotional volatility in their day because mm -hmm. uh that is proven to be a massive uh energy wasting uh both physically and mentally uh and as a result also to improve their their energy levels so what we have in the in the sort of we call them well-being hacks, uh, these short to guided well-being experiences, and the, the outcome that they can achieve is either to feel more balanced, energized, or inspired. So some of the some of the well-being mini well-being experiences work more in the physical well-being. So it might be some yoga or stretching exercises. Um, some may be more on emotional regulation, like breathing and sort of light meditations. And others are more inspirational, so they work more in your mindset and of kind of inspiring you to be more motivated, to look uh, at your next activity as an opportunity to thrive. And, and the idea behind all the these mini well-being hacks is that they always have a narrative that is kind of designed to help you look at your next activity as an opportunity to thrive. So we kind of want to make well-being really integrated into what you're doing rather than just being an abstract concept that is kind of somewhere in your day, but that doesn't have a tangible impact into actually the quality of your output. So in some ways, the goal is also to help you improve your, your performance and productivity at the same time, but not from a place of, from a place of self care, right? From a place of self love and balance, because that is where you can, you can develop better performance and productivity in a way that is more compassionate rather than just me, 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 an ego driven thing. That's not, what well-being, at least for me, means. Um, so that's kind of the the goal in a, in a nutshell. So I'm, I'm guessing it sounds like you've done like quite a bit of research in in finding how to make this app be more most effective, I guess, for people. Yeah. So what in in the research that you've sort of come up with and in in your own coaching experience and yeah. so on, what is what are the things you think that make people kind of get in their own way and stop them from progressing and being as living a contented life, I suppose? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I think it also depends on the type of person you have. So you have the strivers uh, that tend to be, you know, quite ambitious people, but sometimes they forget themselves in the equation. And I'm one of them. Uh, and what I've seen from a personal experience is that we forget to love ourselves at times, right? We get so identified with what we need to achieve. And sometimes it also comes from external pressure. And so we forget that actually, if we feel more balanced, energized, and present, that's going to get us where we want to be, but without fighting and pushing, but rather in a way that is more uh, holistic and actually a much more uh, meaningful and enjoyable, enjoyable uh, path, I would say. And that's been for me the, the, the biggest realization. Uh, the other things is the typical excuse uh, of, oh, I don't have time for this. And I love this quote uh, by Lao Tzu, uh, this uh, amazing uh, spiritual um, Chinese well, master. He says that time is a creative thing. And to say I don't have time, it means I don't want to. And so this kind of excuse, oh, I don't have time, we, we live busy lives. And sometimes, you know, it's about baby steps and doing small things in your day that can compound to a massive difference. So my, my kind of idea was like, okay, well, I've been there. I've said, I don't have time for this, but really I don't want to do it. And it's fine. We all live through, you know, different flows of motivation. We're not machines. And so my, my goal was to understand what is the simplest thing I can do to help people integrate small nuggets of well-being into their day. And just, you know, just a minute of conscious breath can actually change the way your brain is. It, it thinks it operates, you know, and so just one minute. So, you know, everyone has a minute, you know, no matter how busy you are or two minutes. Um, and so mm. that was kind of the idea of like, oh, I need to remember to, to put it in my routine. I need to be motivated, you know, and it's kind of that planning, right? Um, that tends to be the the hardest bit. So I think it's a bit of lack of organization in some, in some senses, which can be hard at times. And I would say even bigger lack of self-love, especially because we feel that maybe we shouldn't make time for ourselves because, you know, strong people don't do that. You know, we kind of have this image of ourselves, especially as professionals. That's, that's what I've seen. And then it's kind of death by paper cuts, right? So you kind of like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. And then it's kind of, it gets to a point where it's like, there is no return. And then actually you lo end up losing more uh, than you probably would have if you were a bit more uh, sustainable in a way. So, so is it aimed at, say, entrepreneurs, people who have their own business, or is it aimed at generally at anyone? Or yeah, that's a good that's a good question. Um, <laughs> now we enter into like the business side of things because obviously there is always dynamics. Um, well, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, um, and I can definitely relate to people or freelancers that have their own gig, and they definitely have a, a lot of stress, a lot of uncertainty to handle. So. I would say that the product is designed initially, it's going to be a, a laptop application. So it's actually going mm -hmm. to be on your laptop just because that's a predominant uh, device that we all use to work. So we wanted to have something that is on your laptop that comes to you rather than something you need to remember to get your phone and actually kind of avoid the, the, the phone in some ways. Um, so it is it's designed for any professional that really is working remotely or in some sort of individual way. Um, we are going to start initially with entrepreneurs and freelancers. Uh, just because of, of we think it's a market that is interesting to target. But of course, the goal is then to spread it out to, to any professional, really. Um, of course, then there are, you know, uh, companies that often buy these products and you kind of um, have to then convince companies, whereas when you convince someone that is a decision maker, so like myself or yourself, it's, it's a different relationship. But ideally, it's for any, any professional that is, that is working in a predominantly in, in a remote environment, I would say, to make the most of, of the, the well-being support. And you touched upon just now about sort of doing things like breath work and so on. And so I get the impression and are there sort of videos on there showing people how to do these sort of things? And Yeah. So one of the things that I, I kind of wanted to bring into this product, I, my background in hospitality and experience building, I wanted to transform well-being not into just a functional experience, but into an immersive experience. And so we kind of spend a lot of time creating uh, these guided experiences where there is uh, visual experiences, there is sound, there is a voice. And the idea is to kind of create mini journeys where you can either do them with your eyes closed or your eyes open, but if you do decide to keep 
your eyes open. We've designed like special environments with special effects so that they can be conducive and also have kind of an abstract artistic element to it. So that's something that we really want to want to push. And one concept that I'm really interested in is this concept of neurodesign, where you kind of look at design from a, from a brain perspective and how can you stimulate the right emotions through the right colors, the right sounds, the right, you know, the right audio, the right voice. So we kind of want to have this kind of multi-sensory well-being experience so that it feels more immersive rather than just, you know, a functional, okay, do hold your breath for six seconds and that's it. Because also that's something you could probably find elsewhere, you know? Mm. So you talked about multi-sensory. So, I mean, have you looked at things like, I don't know, binaural beats or other sort of applications that can be integrated in with that? <laughs> You've touched a very interesting point. So our vision with Essentia is to, to, to kind of develop a deep behavioral uh, understanding of yourself by using a whole series of signals. So the idea of syncing your smartwatch, for example, as a way to kind of track your uh, biorhythms and your heart rate variability. Um, uh, but also what we're planning on doing with Essentia is uh, to kind of look at the way you move between the tabs and your kind of computer activity to predict if there are any stressors or any potential risks for a depletion of energy and kind of work uh, between these different signals that we're building to create a it's an artificial intelligence will be a kind of a, an AI companion that can understand and support you based on your inner biometrics, but also your behavioral biometrics based on how you interact with the, with the, uh, with the, with the laptop in this case. And the idea is to develop almost a sentiment of how you're feeling and then become a platform where third parties can come in to kind of optimize the timing of the experience. Because one of the main problems with, with well-being applications is that their product may be good, but the timing is often wrong because they don't have a contextual understanding of how is the weather, how are you feeling, how busy is your schedule, you know, uh, how, how did you sleep? So it ends up being a fragmented experience. So what we want Essentia to become is, is an operating system where you are at the center of everything and then everything comes you know, you could sync your smartwatch, if eventually your Alexa, any well-being app you may be using, but that becomes a lot more curated and personalized based on who you are and what you're going through. Um, and that's kind of the, the vision, uh, in a way, uh, of what, where we want to take Essentia. So if I'm hearing you right, so there's, there's things like, so when you were talking about wearables, there's, there's things like the Aura Ring and the Whoop yeah. app and, yeah. and all these which give also, as you mentioned about HRV and deep sleep and REM sleep and all, all that kind of th thing. So it's going to take all that all that data and then combine, as you mentioned, with with how you're using your computer and what your your schedule that you've got coming up and what and then give you recommendations and on things that you could do maybe to improve your efficiency or your well being and so on. Absolutely. So let's say that. I'll give you a simple example. Let's say your, your heart rate variability tends to have a strong signal between three and four, and the system sees that you tend to be on LinkedIn and that you have a very right. packed schedule. So it starts finding correlations between different factors or maybe the weather outside, uh, you know, or how you slept if you sink in your health data. So that's the idea of kind of developing a more holistic understanding so that you can manage yourself better and then become a signal for understanding what's the best experience that you could have right now and kind of, through third parties, bring those in so that it can be more personalized and curated. Um, that's kind of the idea of how to bring it all together. Um, and yeah, we want to make also the experience social so you can collaborate with people, go on well-being journeys together. Um, because the vision is for us also to kind of show how the, your well-being can impact others and sort of have this collaborative aspect to to the well-being experience. So it's not just improving your well-being, but showing you how you can proactively impact others. And that's kind of the idea of, of collective well-being that we have for Essentia. Of just being part of Essentia for, for me, it's not just, a, I don't see it as a user. I see it as a co-creator, as someone that takes part of, of wanting to be, you know, at a, a sort of part of something. And that's why we're thinking of building a whole series of like uh, loyalty programs, tokens, where people can also, uh, based on their well-being efforts, uh, basically transform those into causes that could be donated for NGOs and charities. So we want to kind of create an ecosystem where, based on your well-being efforts, that can kind of be transferred into meaningful causes so that you can see that your well-being doesn't only have an impact for yourself, 
but for the greater whole. And that's that's really what I think, you know, for me, that's the that's the life I want to live, right? And I wish more people could do that to, to see the repercussions that, that working on your well-being can have. We hope you're enjoying this episode of the Habits and Health podcast, where we believe creating healthy habits should be easy. If you are looking for deep support to create the health and life you want, we invite you to consider one-on-one coaching sessions with Tony. Coaching sessions give you personalised guidance to fit your unique goals and life situation. Only a limited number of spots are available, but you can easily get started by booking a free introductory call at tonywinyard.com. Now back to the show. I mean, it it seems like there's, there's so much potential for how it could grow in the future with I mean, I'm wondering, for example, if it could incorporate VR um, capabilities to, yeah. for, for like a fitness kind of workout and and further capabilities in the AI world to, exactly. to really extend what it can do. I mean, what have you got lots of ideas of what could happen in the future? Yes, I do. And I have to stop because otherwise <laughs> I, I, I just stay in the future. I have a million of ideas the, the, and I have, we have a roadmap of some of the things you touch. Definitely AI is going to be a fundamental part. With the AI though, my, the reason also why we developed the centuries, we wanted to have a, a conscious kind of use of data. So first of all, the data will always be yours. It should act for you. It shouldn't be a value extraction model. So absolutely, uh, the AI should work with you and for you together. And as the AI learns about you, you learn about yourself and it becomes a collaborative relationship, this kind of human machine relationship rather than AI telling you, you got to do this, you got to do that, because that's not the relationship we want to establish. Uh, uh, blockchain is another one and a very good application for the data uh, aspect that you can own that data and it can work for you so through the creation of tokens uh ai um, the hacks that we were building now um the ones we were thinking of doing ar and vr as well my only concern with that uh technology is the the danger that it could pose if not used consciously because Imagine you live in a world that is completely parallel to reality and you choose to stay in that world. It could easily mm. become a drug. So yeah. what I don't want is to create an experience that becomes a pill. Right. Uh, so I'm, I, it's very easy to think, oh, yeah, I definitely could do VR. And we thought about it, but it's always, okay, what's the repercussion on a, on a socioeconomic level? Right. Uh, and that's really why we're doing this is we want to bring a mm. positive change. So got to be very careful with the... <laughs> with the direction but certainly you know the whole metaverse which is now a big trend right of moving the whole our whole life digitally and virtually is definitely an appealing proposition is just like how can we make sure that it doesn't become a drug where people decide to seclude themselves and not live in reality anymore right because the fake virtual world feels so much better but is it really yeah, yeah. better you know so mm. it's it's a tricky one when you work with well-being and psychology to find the right balance um and yeah, so, but yes, there is thousands of, of possible ideas of where we want to take this. Um, but yeah, I want to try and be as, as conscious as I can to not do uh, build a monster. Let's put it this way. And what, I mean, so you mentioned about how you, you will be able to draw information from other applications such as, I don't know, Aura or Whoop or yeah. smart watches and so on. Yeah. And what about things like, I mean, there's a lot of continuous glucose monitors that are getting more and more advanced all the time. And, and I've heard talk about how they're trying to develop continuous um, insulin monitors and, and, and many other of these types of devices. Yeah. Do you, would you be able to draw information in from those types of things as well? Uh, potentially. I mean, to be honest, I haven't looked in, in, into that. Uh, in that aspect of the health related, I think it will also be determined by how the, the market responds. Uh, We've kind of looked at like uh, def- definitely data in order to curate your experience. And then we kind of looked at also what kind of experiences do we bring in to empower your well-being? Because mm-hmm. um, one of the, the things about the well-being, that we're, the angle that we want to take is have the sustainability angle so that it's you're not only working on your sustainability, but also doing well-being experiences that are ethically sourced, that have a sustainable sustainable angle, that are maybe contributing towards environmental or social goals. So we're kind of trying to work towards that direction of like monitoring yourself to understand what you actually need and how to provide you something that is meaningfully uh, satisfying for your own well-being, but that also can have a positive repercussion on the world. So we're kind of looking at 
at this aspect. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there is there is endless possibilities in terms of the data that you can sink in. Uh, but then you have to also be careful to not overwhelm the user, right? Because mm. <laughs> otherwise it could be kind of analysis paralysis. Like, oh my God, I can't even move that something, my whole biometrics have changed. So we kind of need to be careful of not freaking mm. people out, right? Of having that kind of mysteriousness to life that is not turning people into robots, right? I think that's that's also yeah. interesting to, to kind of look at the trend that we are going into, right? The tracking thing is a massive trend that we're all experiencing. But I, I don't have a wearable, uh, interestingly enough, and I've been asking myself that question for quite some time. And I think a lot of times is, is the value in which the data is presented that feels a bit too deterministic for me. I'd like something that is more like a starting point from which you can start something you know it's it's more like okay we're here and now we can go there or what about if we go here so it becomes a collaboration rather than okay you've done eight thousand steps okay your breath rate is like this okay but so what you know like how can we have a continuous relationship so um yeah i think there's also some some magic in the unpredictability and uh, of us you know as individuals so it's kind of finding the right balance in my opinion yeah and well and what you were saying just then about not having a wearable yourself, I mean, I, I used a whoop strap for 18 months. That's cool. And I quite liked the data at first. For the first year or so, I quite yeah. liked it. And then I started to realize I was able to predict better what the readings were going to be about how I'd slept, about how my HRV was going to be and so on. And eventually I thought, I don't need this. I know exactly what it's going to say every day. So why do I need to keep looking exactly. at this? So I, my contract ended sometime last year and I didn't bother renewing it. Yeah. And I was debating whether to get an Aura ring. Uh-huh. And then I thought, well, so the main attraction of the Aura ring is the sleep data. Yes. Well, I think it's very difficult for me to improve my sleep. My, I, I get amazingly good sleep. Very good. I, <laughs> I almost always get at least eight hours. Usually I never wake up. I feel great when I wake up. So I thought, do I really need something to track my sleep? Because it's, I'm, I'm not sure how I can improve it, really. You know? yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting uh, what you said about Whoop. So I've I've spoken to a lot of people that really enjoyed Whoop, uh, and it seems definitely a very very cool concept. For me, the question is like, well, I would almost argue that Whoop did a great job because in some ways it made you so sensitive and so able to kind of understand yourself that it kind of defined your purpose. Yeah. So I think they've done a great job to actually, hmm. uh, commercially, it's a weird concept and that's always the debate with well-being, right? I should hmm. be so good that you don't need me. Yeah. I'm, or I make you so good. So then the question, hmm. and, and definitely I don't want to, I don't want to create a product that creates addiction or slavery. So my, my idea there is that after a while, like you said, the data becomes a bit, repetitive so it's more about access to experiences and people as a result of that data rather than just telling you oh you slept like this or tomorrow maybe do a thousand steps more it's more about how are you shaping my outer world based on my inner world Hmm. you know and that's where i feel uh you know imagine you you went on youtube and there was you know you could sync your and understood that's what we're talking about who you could you speak to today within your network that is more aligned or what meaningful activities for charity could you, could you contribute to or what great well-being experiences in, in your community could you could you do based mm-hmm. on your inner world? That for me is right. more interesting because it's a continuous exploration. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's interesting what you said about the, the whoop and, and generally the, the, this, these trackers. I just want them to be a bit more human and act more as companions mm-hmm. and facilitators rather than just mm-hmm. uh, reflective or predictive data models, and that's about it, at least for me. Hmm. I mean, we, we talked before, I asked you before about who this might be aimed at, and my my guess, well, as far as an age group is concerned, my guess or the obvious guess to me is that it would be people in their 20s, maybe 30s, who are much more receptive to this kind of thing. Is that what you found, or is, is that? Yes, that's what, that, yeah, spot on. Uh, what what mm-hmm. I found is exactly that. But then again, you know, maybe uh, maybe a slightly older age group might be interested. I mean, what I found is that women tend to be particularly interested in this product uh, from the very get go. Uh, coaches obviously tend to, to to be very interested in this product too. Those are the two like main like standout 
uh, kind of trends. Um, it's interesting about the 20s. Uh, I've, I, I need to validate this because I don't have enough data. My feeling is that it's more around the 30s, uh, I would say. Um, and I think if I had to look back retrospectively at my life, uh, now I'm 32 and I definitely feel that in my early 20s, I probably didn't care, but although generations are different that much about my well-being, it was more about just succeeding kind of thing. Yeah. Whereas at, at 30, you start looking at, yes, I definitely want to succeed, but I'm kind of looking at things a bit more holistically. So my guess is that it would be, um, you know, around 30s, but who knows, maybe someone also, in, it'd be nice to maybe be able to cater to, to 50, the, the 50 age group, which maybe also needs, you know, some, some well-being support. So mm, I, it will remain to be seen. I don't have a, a magic, uh, you know, bow, unfortunately, but yes, I, I, my guess would be similar to yours. Well, and, and as you were speaking then, it made me think about like sub subcultures almost, or, you know, I mean, you so they, for example, there could be, uh, it could be aimed at women who are trying to get pregnant, for example, and it could help them with, things that could be good to eat and what to look out for HRV right wise and and various other like blood pressure and various other things that could be detrimental to their pregnancy I suppose that's a very cool idea I mean one of the things that funny enough we were when we were doing interviews and showing kind of the prototype they're like does it sync with my period and a lot of people said sync with period and those sort of things so that's that's interesting, but to be positioned for an outcome, which is so important for, for, for most women, it's actually an interesting thought. I mean, yeah, there is uh, that's, that's a very interesting one, actually. I never thought about it, although I should because I'm kind of in that position too with my wife. So <laughs> I guess you've given me a good uh, inspiration there. Cool. Well, um, I mean, we could we could talk about this this for, for hours. I mean, it, it, it sounds fascinating. I'm, I'm fascinated by... AI generally yeah. and technology and and health and wellness has been my world for for some time yeah. now. So it's yeah, it's, it's something that that fascinates me. So I'm yeah, I'll be I'm interested to see how it develops and and what new things you add onto it over time. It's yeah, it looks it looks uh, very interesting. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, it's 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 a starting point. You know, like uh, one has to be kind of uh, stay. F- focus on the on the present you know of course there is a whole bunch of things that i that i'd love to do and i have planned but we also need to be humble enough to be like we have to start with something we kind of have to validate step by step uh the product to make sure that you know the people ultimately are the ones that need to benefit from this so that's what we need to listen to at the same time while also it's kind of this interesting i always have this 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 internal and external debate and there is this famous quote by henry ford that you know said if i ask people what they wanted they probably asked for faster horses yeah uh, and so you know people are not going to tell you what you want but you got to respect whether what you're doing is actually in, a improving their life and they're and they're using it so it's a it's a nice dance let's put it this way mm. When is, is it out now or when will it be out? When will it be available? It will be our first release uh, will be on the 17th, Monday 17th, well, but January. Okay. So by the time this, this episode comes out, it will already be yeah, available? Yeah, yeah, it will be out. I'm not sure. And is that, yeah. is that globally or particular countries? Or? No, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be a Chrome extension okay. initially. So all you need is to have Google Chrome as a right. browser and then you just it's a you install it as a, as a plugin uh that's going to be our first uh release um and then soon after we're going to release this part which was uh it's called the off mode so the idea is that with the click of a button uh, all your work related tabs move away because what we found from our research is that a lot of people were having a hard time separating personal and professional life especially in, in remote work environment so mm-hmm. we kind of said, what if we could create this off mode where, you know, you click a button, all your work related tabs move away and your screen now becomes a, your centralized curated space where you can sync your favorite well-being apps, reconnect with great content, explore local or online events tailored to your interests. So it becomes kind of your, your place for self-exploration after work. So to help you have this kind of healthy work-life balance. And, and the idea is that what you do off work impacts how you live your day. So to then have the AI understand 
how the two correlate so that there can be a healthier relationship uh, ultimately for for your own well-being. That's kind of the, mm. the the next step of what we'll be launching. So if people want to find out more about this, where, where would they look? Uh, online. <laughs> they can go on the website. Uh, it's www.essentia, which is spelt with a three instead of an E. Uh, body, mind, heart. That's kind of the reason for the three. Uh, yeah. So Essentia, it's double S. E N T I A dot com and there they can they can try it for free. Okay. And are you sort of promoting do you do much promotion on like sort of social media and stuff? Can people find out more on any like follow you on social media, for example? Yeah, I mean we, we were quite active on, on LinkedIn, uh, and also on on Instagram. Those are the two main channels that we kind of use. Uh, so yeah, just to kind of let people know of any challenges or any kind of, uh, you know, co- content that we may create just to kind of inspire people uh, and hopefully mm-hmm. in their day. But yeah, those are the two main, main channels we use. Okay. Um, there's a couple of questions I ask most guests. And so it's a little bit different from what we're talking about now. I mean, one is, is there a book that's really resonated with you in your life for any reason that's really, really moved you? Oh my God, there are so many there's, I, I, you know, I was, when I was kind of opening the email, I was like, oh, I, that, that, that question. I was like, oh, there's so many. <sighs> um, wow, well, it really depends. I mean, one book that really struck me, really struck me for a human potential, uh, for the human potential is Reinventing Organizations. Okay. So basically, it's a book about leadership and, and how to create companies that are kind of living organisms where, uh, there are no like set uh, titles, but everyone is kind of co-creates and takes ownership at the same time. And it's, it's a beautiful example of how companies can operate and may, it might not be suited for every business. But what I like about that is the, is the beauty of, believ- of believing in human potential and human harmony. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the spiritual message behind it was what made me believe, oh, really, this exists? This is possible? So it was a great um, message of hope. I think Mm. that's what really moved me is that if we do empower people and we actually let go of our fears and our need to control, we can Mm. actually create a beautiful society and even companies which have financial objectives and all those things, they can still Mm. operate in harmony. So that was, that was uh, something that really, that really touched me um, as a, as a book, if I have to think of one recently at least. And finally, Filippo, is there, um, do you have a quotation that you particularly like? Um, well, one that always, I think it's more like, uh, a, a reminder for me, uh, and it's about, um, the, 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 the Chinese, uh, kind of spiritual master that was talking about Lao Tzu. And it always struck me is like to understand the limitations of things, desire them. And, and for someone that kind of likes to think big and dream and stuff like that, sometimes I catch myself trying to live that quote because it's kind of like, yeah, you, you get caught in it and then you realize the limitation of it. So it's, a, it's, a, it's maybe it's not the most, uh, it's quite profound in some ways and maybe it's very specific, but if you have to ask me something that I kind of try to remind myself is that, but one that I try to live by every day, I try, of course, I'm not perfect, is the one by Nelson Mandela, which is I never lose, I either win or learn. I find that to be, uh, so powerful and so uh, just a wonderful thing. And, and it, that's a great example of the neuroscience of well-being at work because that practicing mm. out positive outlook is exactly that. So mm. that's the one maybe that is more practical on a day-to-day level that really helps. Well, and when you mentioned La- Lao Tzu just then, it reminded me of a, a couple of years ago I was reading, you know, Dr. Wayne Dyer who did a, a book called um, Change Your self or i forget what it was called but it's all it's it's taken the Tao Te ching and taken lots of quotations that lao Tzu made and and i was reading this book and i was on a tube in london and i was so <laughs> engrossed with the book i went i didn't just miss my stop i went five stations past my stop <laughs> and i realized wow I, I was just so engrossed in this book it was yeah it's an amazing book yeah Oh, another book, now that you gave me a thing, because I love books, uh, A Treatise on Efficacy. 
by Julien. Uh, that is an amazing book. I mean, we could talk for hours about that book, but uh, very briefly, it talks about the, the, the difference between the sort of Eastern approach towards achieving a goal versus the, the Western approach. Um, and mm. uh, it's like, it's amazing. That, that actually, I would actually, I would actually change that, that book. That book would be my, my top now that I well, I, I lived in Asia for 10 years, so I, I very much know where you're coming from when you're talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's so fascinating. As a Westerner, you're like, wow, really? You can be so mm. powerful without with surrendering, which is not really a sign of weakness, right? It's a sign mm. of being aware of who you are and where you want to be without pushing for things, you know, because in the West, we kind of have this ego-driven approach. And oh my yeah. God, that book is, is so beautiful. So. Yeah. Well, I, I get the impression we could talk about books for the next couple of hours. So I think I think I'm going to end it here, Philip. <laughs> but I, I really thank you for your time and and for letting our listeners know. I mean, the app sounds fascinating. I'm sure a lot of people are going to at least look up and find out more about it. So yeah, good, best of best of luck with that. Thank you, thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's been great talking to you, Tom. Cheers. Next week, episode 52 with Dr. Jenny Goodman. She's been um, working as a GP since 1982 and is a member of the British Society for Ecological Medicine and she specialised in nutritional environmental medicine for the last 20 years with a particular interest in preconception care, fertility and making healthy babies. It's a, it's a fascinating conversation. She released a book um, two years ago called Staying Alive in Toxic Times a seasonal guide to lifelong health. It is really a, a really good book. I think I've read it about three times now. We talk a lot about the book, about some of the things that she talks about in the book. Um, so yeah, so tune in next week, episode 52 with Dr. Jenny Goodman. If you know anyone who you feel will get some real value from this week's episode with Dr. Filippo Leonardo, Leonardo, please do share the episode with them and I hope you have a great week. Thanks for tuning in to the Habits and Health Podcast where we believe creating healthy habits should be easy. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. Sign up for email updates and learn about coaching and workshop opportunities at TonyWinyard.com. See you next time on the Habits and Health Podcast.